Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here today. First time in Leeds and hopefully not the last time. Um, I am going to talk uh, in this session about mobile SEO and before starting to know a little bit better how can I help you more, uh, please let me know who of you have already done any SEO process targeting mobile on the past, please. Okay, okay, that's good, right? So you already know a little bit about the process, so I will go ahead and try to really go to the more meaningful stuff. Okay, I'm Aleida Solis, uh, probably uh, some of you already know me. I work at Sear, I am based in Spain. If you want sun and good food and sangria, you can go and meet me there. I will be very happy to hang out with you there and talk about mobile and about international. And I am here to speak about mobile. I have told you that. Mobile is booming. Well, we already know that it's booming, but how to go mobile? There are usability experts like Nielsen that say, oh, you really need to do this in the right way by providing a very specific mobile experience to your users. The audience behaves differently, they interact with the device differently, they look for different content. You should target them with a very specific presence that is making the most out of the mobile device, even an app, if it is possible. Then we get Google and Google says no, mm, from an SEO perspective and, and more like a crawling perspective, it's much more efficient for us. If you give us only one URL per piece of content, and of course we can crawl your website um, and not have any type of duplications out there, and for that, um, responsive web design is the best approach and we have this other option. So it's a little bit confusing, right? You feel like a little bit like the girls, the girls that's like, so keep calm. The thing is to keep calm and start doing mobile SEO. And really, I am going to go through the steps and you will see that it's a lot of traditional, really traditional SEO's best practices and principles from a criteria analysis uh, factors in general, but it's only extrapolating and, and, and see how we can make the most out of the mobile opportunity and mobile platform in this case. So the first thing that we are going to do as usual in, SEO, in any SEO process is to analyze the, the worst situation, bad situation that we have usually is when our bosses, our clients want to, oh, I've heard and I've seen that mobile is huge. Let's build a mobile site and let's start doing mobile SEO with it. And I, I have a responsive site, so let's just tweak a little bit of things, optimize that and let's go ahead with that. But really, we don't know even how is our mobile audience behaving already, what they are looking for, what are their conversion rates, where are they coming from? What type of devices are they using? So that is why, even if we already have a responsive website, we need to do an analysis, a previous analysis. And for that, you can use your Google Analytics. You will see that a lot of the data you already have, it, a lot of the tools that you will need to use, you already have them. Verify your mobile traffic. There are like even default segments there. It's only to click to choose in order to verify and validate. And what you should do here is to compare the vol volumes and trends of the traffic and conversions from mobile, tablets, and the desktop. And take a look a little bit how they behave. What are, what are the trends? And please, be careful. If at the moment you don't see that it's a huge amount of traffic coming from mobile, remember that it's this, this is just, just a starting situation. Maybe be because you are not optimized at all. You are not mobile friendly at all. At all. So that is why you are in a really bad situation at the moment. That doesn't mean that mobile is not suitable for you. We are going to do that part of the analysis later. But at the moment, it's very, very important that you know, you really realize what is your current status. Also, verify your mobile devices. At the end, also a lot of people say, oh, why, why instead of a website, you don't build better a mobile, uh, a mobile app? Well, that's great, but if you need to develop an app for each type of user or platform that is used by your visitors, well, that's not very cheap, right? So you really need to know what, what are the devices that you, your visitors are already using, that your audience is using. So you can check that also very easily, Google Analytics, compare the volumes and trends among the devices to 
uh, for your mobile organic and your general mobile traffic too, not only the organic part, because this can also give you hints of how people that come from other sources, from social networks, for example, a lot of things are shared through social networks, through Twitter, through Facebook, with the mobile. And you can also have a lot of traffic from mobile, even if you are not ranking in mobiles still. So this is something, this information that will be meaningful for your analysis too. Verify your mobile keywords and pages. Also, with Google Analytics, you can do this very easily. And you can really check here if the keywords that are using at, at the moment, are being used by your visitors, are the same that the ones that are used from your desktop visitors. If the content that is very popular among your desktop users are the same than the content that is very popular for your mobile users, and validate them and see how they behave with each one of them. So compare your keyword and landing pages from mobile desktop. Use a mobile emulator, like for example the Opera one, it's free, you can install it. And there is an also a website called mobileemulator.com uh, or .net. It's the first one that is going to be, to be ranking when you look for that. And you can easily check with them how your site is displayed and how it works with the mobile devices that you have identified before that are used by your visitors. And you can really validate well if you are providing the best experience for them. Unfortunately, at the beginning, most of the times, this is not the, the situation. But at least if they are, the information is shown. The video that you have there is displayed. If it can be played. So the most basic functionality can be checked in this way. Check how your web content, text, images, menu works there. Even if you have done, at some point, conversion rate optimization on your desktop uh, site and you have landing pages that are really targeting towards conversion, maybe when they are displayed on mobile, it's not the case. The button, they need to scroll a lot. The button is like this, very small on mobile. So you need to take care of this type of thing. It's very important that you identify this type of thing for the most important pages of your, of your site with mobile emulators. And now that you know how it is shown on one hand to the user that come to your site and also how this user behave internally, let's see how your current website is ranking, is ranking on the mobile SERPs. And for this, you will use Google Master Tools. There is a filter there for the top pages and the top keywords. And, and you can select this filter to verify, again, the keywords and pages that are already getting visibility on mobile SERPs. And take a look if these are the same that are being shown on your Google Analytics, if there's a gap there, if for some reason the click-through rate is really low, hmm, maybe the titles, and we are going to check that after. Maybe the titles are not that relevant towards mobile users. Maybe they are not shown at all because you have much more limited space. So really, a lot of information is lost there. So here you should compare your top pages and, and top queries to from the ones that you get from the desktop users and validate well the differences and, and identify the pattern here. And from a crawling perspective, you can check if at some point um, the, the, the Google bot for smartphones has have tried to crawl your website, if it has found an error, what are the type of, of problems, of issues from a current perspective that the, the crawler has found on your site. Look for mobile errors and, and, and be aware that this can happen and take that into consideration when you build your new mobile website. Also, the fetch as Google bot option is great, it's great if you for some reason are not sure if you are redirecting at some point, if the developers have done some tricks here to maybe refer directly all of your mobile users to a mobile landing page that will try to make them download the app that you already have, that's those type of situations. Even if you haven't optimized for mobile search engines or if you haven't done any mobile SEO since you have like a marketing department or a product department that have already gone with mobile apps or products, at some point that happens too, and you don't realize that you are losing a lot of your mobile traffic, and 
you don't see, oh my God, I, I don't see any traffic coming from mobile. It's because it is being redirected. So fetch us Googlebot, select the uh, Googlebot for uh, smartphones, and take a look at the HTTP status. If it is a redirection, if it is a 200 OK, if you are not clocking for some reason, maybe uh, something weird may have happened with the configuration, take a look at the code, at the HTML, and see if it is the same thing as the one that you are using, uh, uh, showing to your desktop uh, crawlers to ambassadors. And of course, if you want to do this for the whole website, you can use a web crawler, for example, Screaming Frog. You can set Screaming Frog because there's an option to select the type of, of uh, crawler that you want to use to crawl your website, the user agent. And there's an option there where you can add your own user agent. So you can use Googlebot for mobile user agent and crawl your own website with it and take a look at how it really goes internally, what it finds, what it finds from your site. So again, check for redirects. This is like the most typical traditional type of errors that that are found in this type of processes and validate well that they are really crawling your whole, your whole structure at the moment. Also, you can use a user agent switcher. There are a lot of add-ons for Firefox and there's one for Chrome that is very, very good. That is the ultimate user agent switcher. This is an add-on, a free one. And you can take a look much more visually. You can verify how are the results that are getting you visibility and the type of keywords that are giving you visibility for mobile, uh, mobile uh, search results and how your site is shown there, which, which is the title, where the title is truncated, the description, the URL, who are your competitors there for mobile. At some point also, this can be mixed with local results. So verify well there who are your competitors, because maybe these are not the same than the ones that you have for your desktop results. Take a look at the opportunities and who are you competing with. Again, validate well the snippets of your, of your website, your titles, if they are not shown at all. At some point I have seen situations where website, they had some attempts to do a mobile website and the title that they were showing was like home mobile version and for everything mobile version. This is not relevant for your user really. They don't need to realize that really it's, it's shown already on the mobile search so it should be mobile friendly. You don't need to add the mobile version there. So you really need to even take more into consideration this type of very fundamental things from SEO. The title should be not only very relevant, but very short, very consistent, because you don't have that much space there to lose. Use a toolbar like the SEO Most toolbar, and also check a little bit the popularity of the websites that are competing against you, and see how potentially you can really go above them at some point. If you are behind them, or what is your real capacity to be competitive with them? Verify the domain authority and the external links to where they, where they are getting the links from. Hmm. Also, that gives you a lot of opportunity to identify potential actions for the future. So, with all of this, you now should know your initial mobile situation, your initial status. You are aware of the keywords that are getting traffic. You are aware of how your website is shown to mobile users, how it is shown in the SERPs. Now it's time to discover the, the potential that you can really have with mobile. You can use diverse keyword tools in general, any, any keyword, for example, SEMRAS, Oversuggest, search metrics to find keywords opportunities. Use the keywords that you have identified before that are already giving you mobile traffic as, a, as an input, but really do a typical keyword research. And when you do that, you will see, of course, the volume for desktop traffic, the general traffic. Don't take that volume into consideration that much at this point, but just to get ideas for keywords. 
you can get great ideas too by going to your competitors, the ones that were already ranking for your mobile results. And when you have them, then you switch to Google Keyword Tool. And with Google Keyword Tool, what will you do is to really verify the amount of volume that these keyword ideas have for mobile. Because there is a filter there that will let you um, uh, only see the mobile volume that uh, these keywords have, the ones that, that are uh, shown and really searched through mobile devices. So really all of these great keywords idea that may work for desktop, not necessarily may work for mobile. The volumes are not the same and you can prioritize them accordingly, taking this into consideration. Also, with the previous knowledge, your initial status, your situation, then you know the potential, you know the volumes, the type of capacity. You now know more or less if it is going to compensate or not. You have seen that your initial status is not that well. You have seen that you don't have that much of traffic. You then do the keyword research and you see that the volumes are not that high. Hmm. This can already provide already a bit of ideas or not. You see that the volumes are huge. You see that your initial status was really low, but the potential is so high that it will be like really beneficial to focus more on mobile. So you really need to go ahead. And what is the next step to identify the best approach? If you have seen that there's a lot of potential, that it will compensate your efforts, to develop a new mobile site, then the next step is to validate which type of mobile site is the best for you. And this should correspond to this type of criteria. Really the functionality and the offering that you want to show to your users, the restrictions that you may have also internally, the technical restrictions, and the capacity, not only from a technical point of view, but also from a continuous support, since this is not something that you are going to launch once and live like that, but that you will need to update day to day. So this is also, also something very, very important that you need to take into consideration. And the different alternatives that we have to do this are three. Of course, responsive, a responsive website that is also friendly for mobile, dynamic serving and a parallel mobile site. With dynamic serving, we will end up having the same situation from an SEO perspective than a responsive website since we are going to show the content for mobile through the same URL that we are using for desktop since we are going to identify to detect the user agent and serve another version of the HTML targeting mobile users through the same URL. So really it's also efficient from a crawling perspective. But if for, for some reason it's really complicated to implement from a technical perspective, then you may want to go to the third option. That is a parallel mobile site. With a parallel mobile site, you have two completely and differentiated versions of URLs. The ones for your desktop and your for the ones for your mobile. What it is great about dynamic serving and parallel mobile sites that a responsive web design cannot offer you, and we are going to really go much more into detail after this, is that they let you to really target another type of keywords completely. The user experience can be completely different, the content can be completely different, and this doesn't need to be clocking because you are going to really show the same content, the same piece of HTML to both visitors and bots from mobile, and this, because of this, is not clocking. What you cannot do is to implement this in a really bad way and confuse um, your users and the bots and show a different type or piece of content to your mobile bots and mobile users. We are going to see that much more in detail after this, but I just want to give you the general vision that you should have with the three alternatives that, that we have for mobile.
Taking this into consideration, then we need to make choices. You know, we have choices to make. And the first one is, of course, if I have seen, if I have, if I have identified before that the keywords that were used by my mobile audience, the, the, the ones that I want to run with, are the exact same than the ones that are used by my de desktop audience. I don't need a different URL version or dynamic necessarily. A responsive web design can be my ideal solution if I can implement it, if I can really go responsive. If I have a small website in WordPress or Drupal or John Lodge, this is very pretty straightforward. But if I have this legacy platform that is integrated with an internal system, that might be a little bit more difficult. So this type of validation is the one that you need to do at this point. And then, if you need to provide a whole new, different set of content, different offering, uh, different keywords to your mobile audience, to your mobile visitors, you have identified that the keywords are totally different, then responsive is not a choice. Dynamic serving, and if at some point this user agent detection and delivery of content is too complicated from a technical perspective, then a parallel mobile site. So now we have a better vision of the different type of approaches, and we need to do which are the SEO best practices for each one of them. And there are best practices targeting all of these three types of approaches, but also are, there are good practices that are shared among them. And we are going to start with this one, with the general ones. And you will see that these are also best practices with traditional, typical SEO. And the first one is optimize your mobile speed. And mo in, in mobile, it's even more important that for desktop because we know that 3G is not that fast sometimes. We have limited bandwidth. And at some point, it can be like really, really mm. problematic for users to see this same type of content that has, no, ha has really no issue with the desktop. So verify your speed and use the page speed inside filter for mobile really easily. Also, follow the best practices that are shared here. From minimizing, uh, using cache, these are best practices that you can also implement to, to, to optimize and the performance of your desktop site, but for mobile, as you can see, it is even more fundamental. Design and organize for your mobile audience and optimize well the spaces. And this is very, very important here. And you can see how TripAdvisor has done this really, really well from a usability perspective, since you cannot miss here the reservation button. And you can see how they make the most out of the space. You don't need to scroll to really know where you are and if you want or not to convert there. So they do a great job because visually you, you know that it's the same landing page that you are seeing on the desktop, but it's really optimized to fit and to be used effectively with your mobile device. So this is quite actually quite hard to do, but you need to do it in order to make the most of, out of your mobile presence, of course. Beware of the elements like flash, interstitials, that don't work well at all in your mobile device. And also interstitial can hurt crawling at some point, so be careful. Instead of put up interstitial there, maybe you can suggest in a much more user-friendly way, less intrusive to Optimize your mobile page's relevance. Again, the title, description, URL, typical stuff of SEO. But take a look here, and I don't want to say how many characters are shown in the titles, or because this change, this change a lot from device to device, and also if these are tablets. So th there's, I don't like rule of thumbs in general. So use your emulator and the user agent switcher, and take a look how many characters are shown for your situation. Because also sometimes it's, it has been also tested that these are not, a, this is not about characters, but also pixels, so it can change. So make sure that your keywords, important relevant keywords, the, the, the descriptive keyword that will make users to click there are shown 
in a relevant way to run for them too. Take into consideration, again, the limitations. This is the most important thing here. And of course, use structured data for your mobile content. And here is even more important, not from a um, uh, strategy perspective necessarily, but from a, sim simply put, from a visibility perspective in mobile, because the space is much more limited. Be, if you rank top five on your desktop, on a desktop results, it's okay. You, you don't need to scroll to see your result. In mobile, it's not like that. You only see a couple of them, and because they also add a lot of ads, usually the AdWords ads, in relation with the organic results, take a lot of space. It's not like in desktop. So really, if you have the opportunity to, to, be, to improve your visibility with rich snippets, uh, do it. It's ideal. Make the most out of them for mobile resources. Again, if you're a local business, even more important because it, it is likely that a big map is going to be shown there. And in order to be seen there as an organic result, people will need to scroll, even if you rank number one. So you really want to appear there on, on Google Maps if you're a local company. So register and optimize for placer, places that is also now Google Plus for businesses. They, they are being migrated. I don't know if in the UK they have already launched the, migra the migration, but this is something that you need to do in one pla platform or the other, for sure. So these were the general best practices. Now we are going to take a look a little bit more about the ones only for responsive web. And what is responsive web? You can see here that there's this great tool to check and faulty here. It's the same HTML, it's the same content, it is using CSS and media queries to fit well the device, the width of the device that is being used by the visitor. You can verify if a website is responsive or not with these tools that I share here. And there are best practices that we need to follow. And Google has specified here. So if you choose to go responsive, because you will use the same keywords than the ones that are used from your desktop content, you just need to go responsive, then make sure to share this with your developers. It's very important that you don't you don't at some point implement something incorrectly. Again, the pros and the cons. The pros is that it's only one HTML. You have all of the consolidation of the popularity on this HTML. You don't need to duplicate. There are no risks of duplication. The cons, of course, possible redesign, potential redesign if you are not still responsive. No possibility of content differentiation in this case, and also less optimization from a user experience perspective. And this is also very important because there are some limitations, again, from what you can reorganize using CSS here. Still, even if you have a front-end developer magician there, there are still limitations that you, can no, you cannot implement this type of designs that are totally making the most out of the mobile space as we have seen before with TripAdvisor, for example, that this was a totally differentiated HTML for mobile users. Again, if your keywords are the same from your desktop, if you can implement also from a technical perspective, this is the choice for you. And you can leverage a lot of frameworks and, and templates if you are also a small business, if you're likely using WordPress, it's very, very easy to, to implement. And from a development perspective, what you need to take into consideration here, and the best practice in general here, is that you need to let Google bot to crawl your assets, your JavaScript, your images, your CSS. Google bot needs to really find that you are a mobile website, that you have a mobile version there through a responsive web approach, and this is the way to do it. So be, be very, very careful because of, for some reason there are websites that like to limit a lot 
what the Google bot can crawl or not. So if you are going responsive, this is a must do. Also, I, sp I told you this before, like five minutes ago, but for responsive, it's even more and more important because it's the same piece of HTML. It's the same content that you are using already for desktop. You need to verify well if the content is displayed well and also if the speed is good enough. Otherwise, from a technical perspective, it's working well, it's a good responsive site, but from a user experience, a crawling pers uh, perspective, it can take too much to load, to crawl. Y you can leave information there that is not seen by the user or by the bot because of this. Now you know the best practices with responsive web. You can see it's very pretty much straightforward. This is the easiest way to do, really. But there's much more for dynamic serving. And specifically for dynamic serving, what you need to take into consideration is that you can do things like this. Orbit, for example. You can take a look there, and the URLs are the exact same URLs for the desktop and the mobile, and you can see how the design is totally different. This is not responsive. You cannot do this with responsive. It's totally different, and really is optimized at maximum. And again, what responsive, uh, what dynamic serving does is that um, you identify the user agent. You identify if, if it is coming from desktop or from mobile. And if it is a mobile, you will show through the same HTML a different piece, uh, through the same URL, a different piece of HTML. So really, it's through the same URL. You won't have much more crawling, you know, efforts from 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 a search perspective. You will be able to consolidate your strength, the popularity with the same URLs. The con, well, the complexity of it all. If it is even complex to explain, imagine to implement. I've seen an entire website that have been the index at some point because the user detection was not implemented well, unfortunately. It's more, much more difficult to identify if there are some errors that have been implemented with this since, you know, from a visibility perspective, it's the same URL. So it's much more difficult. It's not like we're a parallel website. That if you are referred, redirected to a, another piece of HTML that is not really relevant, you can see it there directly in the browser. Hmm. So really, you need to be really much more careful in this way. So if you want to provide a highly personalized experience towards your mobile users, different set of keywords that you need to optimize for. This is the way to go. The best practices. To let Googlebot know that you are delivering, that you are providing a different set of HTML through the same URL based on the user agent, you need to add this code on the HTTP headers. You need to say, hey, I am varying the content on the, on the pendants of, on, on, on the user agent. Effectively detect unserved user agents. Again, this is the key of this approach. In order to avoid clocking and errors and the indexing, this is the whole key. And you can check here Google Bucks best practices and the typical situation they find. And Please share them with your developers when you are following this approach because it's very, very sensitive and important to take into consideration. And these were the best practices for dynamic serving. And the third one, the last one, is parallel mobile site. Parallel mobile site is like the one that BBC has. You can see it's like dynamic because it makes the most out of the mobile experience. The content is, is if they want it, they, it could be totally different. Of course, it's not because the same news. But it really fits and makes the most out of the space. But you can see like the, like, uh, how the URL is, is different. It has its own structure. So you create a parallel mobile site. 
The best practice to do this is to do it on a, mo on a mobile subdomain, on an AIM subdomain. So it's very easy to see that you're on a different mobile presence there from a user perspective. Also, it's easier to track. You set a completely different profile on Google Analytics and you can really isolate there all of the activity and the traffic on the subdomain. You know that it's a mobile traffic. And if you implement a good URL structure, it's also e much more easily to refer from one of the other and to redirect if at some point a desktop user or crawler come to your mobile version, it's much more easily to do a redirect, to rewrite, and you have re really easy to implement rewriting rules if you follow this approach because your URL pattern will be the same, just in an M subdomain. It's much more easily than if you implement it with subdirectories, with a different type of URL naming, or even another website. I don't know for what reason <laughs> someone could have, could have wanted to go with a totally different domain for their mobile experience, for their mobile presence, but they do. So avoid that, it's much more simpler. Go with an M subdomain to do this. And again, the pros is because it's much more easier to implement from a technical perspective and it tends to create less errors also from a crawling perspective. This one. What's the issue with this? That at the end, you will see, you will need to add additional annotations, um, add the annotations not only in the HTML, referring from the mobile to the desktop version to make Google see that this is not duplication of content, but the just mobile content. Uh, also on XML side, side maps to add the annotations, uh, you also will need to implement uh, redirects if it doesn't need to do this, but if at some point, for some reason, a visitor that, for example, this happens a lot in social network actually, when you share content that you have visited with your mobile, you share content of a mobile version, an M subdomain. If for some reason someone is following you from a desktop and clicks from a desktop, that same URL will end up on an M subdomain, but you don't want that. You want to redirect that user to their desktop version. So this is the type of work that you will need to implement. So you, you'll see you have much more work ahead. You have two pieces of HTML that you will need to maintain and to update. That are shown through two pieces of, of URLs too. So, if you want to really give this very personalized user experience, your keywords are different. You want to make the most out of the mobile space that you want. This is the best approach to go. This is the best approach to follow. If you cannot do dynamic. And how redirects should work. It's like this. If at some point, if you add the annotations, they shouldn't. But if at some point you get a user going to the version that is not for them, a desktop user to the mobile version, or a mobile user to the desktop version, they should be redirected to the correct version. Google says that this redirection, it doesn't matter if it is 301 or 302, but I, I like to be consistent and make it 301 because this is not something temporary. It is like this. It is your structure and you want to refer well in a meaningful manner and also from a popularity perspective one to the other if it is the case. Also, as I mentioned before, clean and consistent mobile URL structure. So it's easier to track, it's easier to refer, it's easier to browse, much more easier to implement the redirections like this. Keep it meaningful and, and also the redirects need to be meaningful. Rel, alternate, and canonicals. From your mobile version, HTMLs, you need to add a canonical tag towards your desktop version URL. And vice versa, from your desktop version's URLs, you need to add a rel alternate mobile tag referring to those specific URL versions for mobile. So this needs to be a one-to-one -one thing. It's not like, again, like typical Mishaps and errors with canonicals. From every page, internal page, you refer only to the home page. No, 
these are like the typical errors that we end up having. Don't do them. <laughs> Don't follow them. It's very important that you do this in a one-to-one -one basis. You can follow Google recommendation here with examples of these annotations. And you can add them also to the sitemaps. So it's easier to implement. And you give extra signals like this too. And again, it's important from a user perspective to let the user, if they want to switch from one version to the other, if they ended up going to the mobile version, if at some point they were not redirected to the right version or something, or they really just want to have the other experience because they know that they have seen something there and they don't really know how to find that content on the, your mobile version, you need to give us a link so they can go there. But of course, you will need to implement this link with cookies. This cannot be a direct link, otherwise you will end up having an infinite loop there because it's going to detect that <laughs> it is a visitor from mobile, it's going to be redirected to the mobile version again and again. Now we know the Paul mobile website's best practices. You can see it was like very straightforward for one and the other. They have all general guidelines and, and, and really best practices for, to follow and to avoid image shafts and just like basic SEO type of guidelines and, 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 and relevancy and popularity type of factors. And you can see these others are much more related about how you can implement this so they are SEO and search efficient from a user perspective, from a mobile perspective and also a mobile user perspective here because at the end it is towards your mobile user that you want to end up attracting and converting from. So you may think you're ready to do mobile SEO now. Please raise your hand. Who's ready here to do mobile SEO? Okay. It's also about measuring though. Don't forget about this. You may think, ah, I'm ready. I know how to implement. I know which approach is the best for me. But it's also about measuring and enhancing what you have done before. Especially if it is the first time, the first process that you will do. So track all of the activity. Remember, this is an SEO process. It's nothing different. You will need to track all of the activity that you get from mobile search. Check, verify well if the keywords on the landing pages that are getting you traffic are the ones that you thought, are the ones that you planned with, are the ones that you optimize for. And check your mobile ROI. Is it positive? Is it negative? Hmm, this is something very, very important. This needs to be beneficial at the end. It's a business. So this is something that at some point oh, we, l we lose, we, we, we might not take into consideration in our day to day, but it's a must if we want to really earn, prof earn, earn money, make profits, and make everybody happy in our, in, in, in our company, of course. You can see this is an evolutive type of process. It needs to grow. And if initially, if it is not necessarily as positive as we had thought, we can improve it over time. Let's see which keywords are working well. Let's see which keywords are not. Let's optimize them, expand, eliminate from the process. The thing is to achieve our goals. And now you know how to do it. Let's go mobile. Thank you.